kind of gadgets, so I'm trying not to be distracted by what I'm working with. But well, thanks, Don and Jeanette. Uh, I've been doing this for six years, right? So what you'll see today, uh, usually daily concerts, not all the six years, but you know, uh, several months out of the year, uh, probably about three, three to five, maybe sometimes six months out of the year. Uh, and uh, Jeanette is like organizer number one, no question. That's Jeanette. Because we have this idea of volunteerism. Uh, and uh, what's happening today in Ukraine, uh, the key to uh, uh, protecting Ukraine, protecting the world, uh, we have the world, the third world war possibly, you know, at our, at our you know, doorstep. Uh, the key is that everybody helps. It's not a question of just, you know, people have guns uh, and giving them more money to have more guns and, and, and to help them. This is very important. Right? Had we not had money and guns, we probably wouldn't have a country. I wouldn't have a country. I would have had to pack up and go, uh, like a lot of other people. Uh, but uh, volunteerism is uh, the person who takes a gun, risks his life for his brother, for his family, for his country. He doesn't have to do it. He can pick, pack up and go too, right? Uh, uh, but everybody uh, has a chance today to stop this craziness. <laughs> Uh, Ukrainians, by nature, we are pacifists. We're not militant, you know, crazy, you know, warmongers. Uh, now, we know that type of uh, government. We call the Moscow Empire. We don't like it. And we haven't liked it for years, but now uh, I'm very happy to say we were prepared. You know, maybe barely prepared. Uh, and a lot of that is because of American support. Uh, when in about, you know, 10 years ago, when the war started, it's not just one year, it's 10 years uh, once they first uh, got off the boats and occupied Crimea. And uh, at that point, we had no uh, guns, we had no uh, military. Because the president of Yanukovych, the Russian puppet, puppet uh, sold the country for $18 billion <laughs> to Putin. And one of the uh, conditions was he has to get rid of the military. So the Russians can very easily take over whenever they like. So 10 years ago, uh, that's when uh, Europe and America started to donate uh, the things that we don't have. Now we have something very important, but probably the most important thing. We have our lives, right? Uh, you might say, well, how do these Ukrainians know, uh, you know, ward off this, this, this huge empire? Uh, and the answer is uh, even more important resource, even more than our physical bodies, it's Ukrainian spirit. Uh, and I don't have to convince you, this is a fantastic example for the world how to stop war. You have to have the right motivation, you have to uh, do something. And so many people, even uh, grandmothers, right? grandfathers it's understood, but grandmothers a week before the war started training and saying, give me a gun. I know who the Moscow Empire is, I know what they do. You cannot let them take over. They will kill us, they will, and, and I don't have to convince you, turn on the TV, you see the torture chambers. You see the bombs written uh, for children. Uh, uh, this is uh, not just an empire. Uh, this is the evil empire. Uh, and when I say these things, I you see I'm smiling. You know, what is this positivism? Uh, I smile because I focus on the positive, on the spiritual development of the world, the potential spiritual development. That's why we have wars. That's why God lets the devil, the Antichrist, wreak havoc because he gives us a chance to either do something or not do something. And if we don't do something, it gets uglier. And if we do do something, uh, we can make the world a lot better. And the world without the Moscow Empire, not just Ukraine, that's a good thing. Now, we don't hate Russia, right? Uh, well, actually, a lot of people do, let's be honest. Uh, and when I ask people in Ukraine, who hates Russia? Most everybody raises their hand. <laughs> How could you not hate what they're doing? But uh, Putin wants us to hate him. He wants us to hate Russia. Otherwise, that's what a terrorist does, right? He wreaks terror. So we, as uh, good people, don't give Putin what he wants, right? Uh, we give him what he needs. Uh, we uh, do not go crazy, do not go nuts, and do not uh, help him escalate the Third World War. We keep calm. Uh, we play the Bandura, 
we listen to spiritual songs, uh, we get our act together, right? Uh, and uh, there's a lot I want to say, I'll, I'll say it maybe a little bit later on. But the one thing I want to say is God bless America. Had there not been an America, right? And a freedom loving uh, people who, who still believe in the land of the free and brave, we would not have had Ukraine. And my ancestors, all my ancestors, if they fought as, as, as much as they could, but at some point uh, to preserve the next generation, they fled. Uh, eventually, my grandparents, like Jeanette, fled to America, right? But I don't like the idea, even though I was born in America, of, of you know, taking part in this fantastic, you know, modern experiment we call America. Uh, I very much wanted another experiment, the idea of going back home. <laughs> America's been fantastic, I have nothing against it. I mean, coming now and doing my work is fantastic. People come even on a Thursday night and, and listen to you know, these things I say. But uh, I'm very happy that my grandfather and grandmother got out. But I think it would be even better to go back home. And finally, in my generation, and it's a fantastic honor, that's another reason why I smile. Because my grandfather left a little bit for me in my generation, in your generation, to finally end this evil fascist uh, empire that's killed uh, so many Ukrainians, you know, so many my, really all of my family. Uh, so, uh, and again, uh, the idea is not to uh, stop them out of hate, but stop them out of love. Now, how do you do that? How do you, even somebody on the lines, tell them to love your enemy? Uh, what is he going to do? Like, you put the gun on you. <laughs> But they don't do that in Ukraine. They say, thank you so much for coming. We'll think about that. We've been thinking about that. We don't have hate in our souls. It's not part of our Ukrainian you know, collective uh, organism. Uh, we just want to go home. But we want to have a home to go to. And we want to have a Ukrainian home. And you know why? And you know what, what I love about Ukraine is that they are freedom lovers too. I had a lot of freedom in America. Right? I had a good education. I could be whatever I wanted to be. But in Ukraine, it's on a different level, right? We've had to deal with the Moscow Empire. America has been free to develop, you know, Canada and Mexico, even though the Canadian border is very close. Is anybody afraid of Canada? They're fantastic folks. <laughs> you know, and I hope, this isn't just a, <laughs> ask us and just make sure I don't say something too. I have to go to Canada tomorrow and it's the board. So I'm going to play some music, otherwise I'll talk and talk and talk. So, uh, this is what we call the pop stuff. Uh, and I'll explain a lot more about it. Uh, this is, uh, I consider, the first Ukrainian national anthem written by a Jewish man about 8,000 years ago. This is where it gets strange, right? Uh, Isaiah. Anybody hear the prophet Isaiah? Uh, when he wrote, God is with us, he understands all languages. Listen to him, do what he says, because God is now with us in the flesh. The Kozaks would sing this. Ukrainian Middle Age uh, spiritual hymn, it's a composition, it's not for uh, called Irmos. Uh, they're written down, Kivsky uh, Kvadratni, the small, little squares. Uh, and uh, the Cossacks would sing this song in battle uh, as an anthem, uh, not singing about you know, Christ in the flesh, uh, but the idea that when we defend our country, uh, God be with us and help us. Help us defend our country, uh, help us. Uh, go back home to our families uh, and, uh, and and do this the right way. So it's not in war. I'm not seeing Russian. It's actually Church Slavonic, uh, the language, the, the literary language of the monks, uh, about uh, about a thousand years ago.
uh, three instruments, uh, but important to say what are these instruments, uh, and also interesting to say these are instruments which most Ukrainians don't know. Okay. There's lots of instruments, you know, folks don't know old time instruments, uh, but these are national instruments, right? Uh, these are uh, instruments for uh, the idea of pa true patriotism, right? Uh, positive nationalism, love for your country, right? Not hate for the neighbors, <laughs> uh, but a true, true spiritual patriotism, uh, and uh, specifically the spiritual uh, tradition known as the Kobza tradition. Uh, the players of the, the Bandura and the Kobza uh, were played by uh, spiritual singers who were blind. Uh, they would travel with the Bandura Kobza from village to village city to city, uh, and they would tell the truth. <laughs> that was their job. Uh, tell Ukrainians uh, to be good, <laughs> right? Love one another. Uh, everything that's in the Bible. Uh, this was the, or, you know, the gospel. Uh, this was the Kovsar's word. These were sermonizers. And if you don't believe me, take a look at what I do. It's sermonizing. Let's be honest. Uh, but uh, it's, it's something separate. You might say paraliturgical, right? I'm not. Uh, actually, I'm in the church, you know, quite often. I mean, it is a good place, or it's a good aura, a place people are used to uh, hearing the term God and aren't afraid of that. Uh, but uh, uh, this is a tradition which existed uh, between 1700 to 1933. So only about 233 years the Kobzars existed uh, when they would practice this tradition. Uh, but it's important to note that they existed uh, only under Russian occupied Eastern Ukraine. So these two instruments are not just Ukrainian, they're Eastern Ukrainian instruments. And when a person, uh, even today, on the front says, what are these instruments? Uh, the question is, why don't they know them? What happened? Uh, well, a lot happened. Uh, and uh, so much was, uh, was done to uh, kill God, right? And it's a very strange thing, even the communist you know, manifesto, or their, their idea, was to help one another. It's a very Christian ideal. Right? Feed those who can't. Uh, uh, and if it actually happened that way, if they actually became the socialist government, <laughs> which they, you know, pretended or maybe maybe wanted at first, uh, that would be fantastic. But unfortunately, as we said to Jeanette, communism was not socialism. Uh, when you keep people slaves and, and don't let them develop, that's not healthy. You know? uh, and unfortunately, it happened that way. And for the Kobzars, who sang uh, about morals, about truth, about justice, about Ukrainian history, the Ukrainian version, not the Russian version, that we have no history, we have no language, it was all created by intelligentsia, you know, they were all separatists, you know, they didn't want to be a part of Mother Russia. Uh, this is uh, what the, the government, you know, pumped into Ukraine for those, you know, hundreds of years. So 300 years, we've lived this Moscow Empire. And the question is, what does, why does Putin want it back so much? Uh, because, uh, on a lot of different levels, uh, they're afraid that if they lose Ukraine, they lose their empire. And they are losing their empire, uh, but uh, you know, it's kind of strange how it happens. But uh, there's an idea that being exploited for those three years, Ukrainian resources, people, intelligence people, uh, loving people, we became part of this Russian uh, regime. Uh, the Cossacks were the people who were on the front, who won the wars, right? Uh, and, and, killed as a result. Uh, so without Ukraine, they're afraid that they will lose their empire. And I think it'll happen, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> it's time for them to get their own country into gear, rather than take other countries and make them slaves, right? <laughs> that's, that's the idea of the free world. Well, unfortunately, other you know, dictatorships like China have other ideas. And what's happened to Taiwan? What's the big deal? You know, let them you know, make their chips and, and do what they do. Uh, but uh, let's hope it doesn't turn into World War III. Maybe it's already World War III. But uh, the idea is again to not panic, but do what we have to do. So this is a Bandura. <coughs> it's, uh, most Ukrainians, who's heard of a Bandura? Uh, who understands Ukrainian language? Another question. Uh, so we have some news here. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> uh, so this is a very smaller version, and uh, all of these instruments, they were prohibited the past hundred years. No players, no makers. Uh, so what we're doing with, with me and my friends, the Pope's article, what is that? It sounds pretty strange. 
we are people who are reviving this spiritual tradition. And uh, how uh, a traditional culture would have sounded is my next song. Uh, and uh, what am I singing about? I didn't come here to bore you, so I'll explain all the texts. Uh, because uh, these are all songs, they're all songs of defense, right? Just like Islam Bok, the God of Witness. Uh, this is, uh, as I go through the valley and through the field, will or will not I meet a long lost relative? You might say, what does this have to do with, with defense? We want to hear war marches, right? Well, I know the war marches. Uh, there's some fantastic ones. Raz, But this is simply very simple stuff. But the real spiritual uh, songs are what I'll show today. So we have a brother and a sister. Is there a brother and a sister here tonight? Any brothers and sisters? We're all brothers and sisters, so it's a matter. So the brother and the sister there from maybe Poltava region where I live in eastern Ukraine, practically. Uh, but maybe the brothers gone off to Lviv, to western Ukraine, to get out of the Russian Empire, uh, maybe get a, get a you know, have a little bit more freedom. Uh, but uh, he comes back home, and he sees his sister, you know, reaping the rye, and he says what any good brother would say. Uh, he says, hello, zdrastvui, in the Poltavan, Poltava dialect. Uh, but his sister does the worst thing uh, she could do. She ignores her brother. You know, how, how can you possibly, after all these years, ignore your brother? Have you become so proud? You know, what happened? What's, what's the problem? And she says, I haven't become proud. The opposite. I couldn't recognize you through my tears. And what is, what is this philosophy? Something very specific. Uh, she's changed. She now speaks Russian. She uh, uh, has learned to cope. She's a survivor. She's adapted. Uh, but uh, she goes on to talk about how it's very hard to work under the Russian Empire. Uh, there's not, no feet, food. There's no uh, wood for the stove. And when the children ask, Mommy, give me some bread, there's nothing to eat. Uh, so this kind of recalls the genocide in 1933 when the Khazars were killed. By starvation, by mass shooting, we don't know exactly. Uh, we're working on looking for KGB documents to, to prove this, this theory they were killed. But, you know, Stalin killed everybody. And you didn't have to be a, a spiritual singer or a blind one. Uh, so, uh, and the idea is uh, how to end this conflict, de-escalation, we call it, uh, and uh, Ukrainians have had been a fantastic example. Uh, we've had a very specific metamorphosis. Eastern Ukraine, which was traditionally uh, under the Russian space, uh, Western Ukraine, traditionally under Western countries like Poland, Austria, uh, they finally got them together. They divided us right with this line uh, because of you know, different empires and wanting to take part for all these years. Uh, but finally, with the common enemy, a uh, common cause, even more, Ukrainians have gotten together. <coughs> and something which is very important uh, for America, if they're going to try to label you as the left or the right, don't <coughs> believe it. <laughs> it's phony. It's fake. It's all made to, uh, to uh, get power and money. Uh, people are much more complex than you know, one or two. You know, Sports teams, I think. So, uh, the idea is for Americans, uh, don't leave Ukraine to the, to the, to the, to the Russians. Uh, 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 Ukraine with America, this is going to be a very serious world, right? Uh, and with Europe, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll teach Europe some lessons as well. So, uh, I try not to talk. From the traditional folk hours,
say spiritual songs. The Ukrainian spirituality usually comes out with minor tonality, uh, cultural association, uh, but a lot of these songs, they are very sad. Um, uh, this is what we call the Torban. Uh, it's, uh, has anybody heard of a Baroque lute? Raise your hands. Okay, it's the Ukrainian Baroque lute uh, in every way. Basically, this you know, it's super, uh, super guitar, you might say, of the old world, the Baroque time. The Ukrainians took, took it and made it even more and super. We added some more strings, right? How many, if somebody said, how many strings are on there? About 34, that's not a cat. Sometimes they put more, sometimes less. Uh, she said, did you make those? You gotta be crazy. I said, well, uh, I didn't promise anybody I was saying. But uh, you can't buy these, you know, where do you get these instruments? We have to make them. Uh, and this is, you know, 12 year, years of my life making these instruments. Uh, because, again, Stalin didn't leave us a lot. But just as a musician, I mean, you see these things in books, but uh, in the diaspora, you know, we have some bandura, the Ukrainian bandura chorus. Who's heard of the Ukrainian bandura chorus? I think I'll start with, with, with a song from their repertoire. Uh, uh, so uh, this is the Torban. Uh, it's a Baroque lute, uh, but you can also play like a bandura, like a quadzo. We have these treble strings. They all have treble strings. Uh, and uh, the quads are uh, way was basically to collect the most valuable poetry, right? And not just poetry, these are again songs of defense. Defense against not just the Russian or any other you know, uh, uh, invader, uh, defense against evil, right? Defense against uh, things that are bad for you. Uh, this is good, wholesome material, even though it's very sad. Uh, they're not also sad, uh, but most of them. <laughs> I like sad music, I don't care what other people like it. It was not happy to use it on the radio, but it, it, somebody told me on, on the Vendors of Agency, uh, 30 years in the gallery, I played two dumas, these epic works. And uh, an old Baba said, you, you ruined our, our celebration. You know, play something, you know, happy. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm very sorry, but when I listen to, you know, the pop stuff that they play on the radio, I'm not so happy. That's what I can say. <laughs> so listen to this stuff, it's, it's, uh, it's good stuff, it's real stuff. You won't hear it on the radio. Uh, this will be your experience, I'm sorry. Uh, so, uh, this is a song uh, by one of the most serious of Ukrainian leaders, uh, the national poet. Who's heard of Tarasha uh, Fantastic artist, fantastic uh, uh, visual artist, fine artist, a uh, fantastic uh, poet, uh, one of the best, really talented. Uh, he was born a slave, uh, but uh, some people in Russia actually bought him out of slavery, uh, saying, listen, uh, you know, you have some fantastic ideas of freedom, and we need those, those in Russia. His books were actually printed, uh, there were some other folks in Ukraine, like, like Karvika, uh, but uh, really, he was first popular amongst Russian intelligentsia, who haven't had enough of dictatorship. They wanted their freedom too, and they considered Shevchenko one of them. Uh, so, unfortunately, the Tsar uh, did not give up, they had to kill him, uh, and what happened after the Tsar's regime uh, was not a lot better. Uh, my relatives say it got a lot worse. So this is uh, Shevchenko. Some people say he was even a Khazar, but don't be mistaken, he was not a Khazar. He only entitled his anthology Khazar uh, because the spirit of his poetry is very much along the line of the Khazar uh, repertoire. Uh, so this is a song uh, uh, also dealing with today. Uh, and the question is, uh, what would Shevchenko tell uh, we are in, not Burlington, but Shelburne, Vermont. Uh, and I know exactly what he would say, because I learned his, his poetry, his word, his truth. Uh, and what does he say? Uh, he says, Ukraine again is worried, the black clouds are rising. Right, they're not so black today, I mean, that's nice. Uh, but uh, across the, the Liman, across the Crimean region, the Delta, uh, another cloud from across the field, maybe in the Donbass region. Again, Ukraine cries like a child. He compares Ukraine to a child who, you know, the boogeyman is, is coming again. <laughs> and who will save Ukraine from the boogeyman? Uh, where is Daddy America? Well, we don't really know who Ukraine is. Maybe they're little Russians. That's what, you know, the, the, the Russians say. Maybe it's true. Uh, Europe, you know, give us a hand. Mommy Europe. Well, you know, sorry. 
did happen, unfortunately, in Shevchenko's time. This is written in 18, uh, maybe 1850. Uh, but today, we have a different uh, situation. I sing the last verse in the past tense, because uh, I sing about the worst situation uh, as Ukraine is destroyed. That the children of the freedom fighters, the Cossacks, no longer believe in God, right? And we can see in the Soviet uh, Empire, uh, you could not be baptized. You had to do it, you know, very secretly. Uh, but today, we have a different story. Why are these boys in the trenches? Is it because they make lots of money? Now it's good that they have some money, right? Thank God to support their families while they're there. Uh, but as my friend, who loaned me $2,500 to fly here, my neighbor, you know why he has $2,500? Because he actually gets paid for being on the front. And he said, God, he's still alive. He said, you're, you don't have to pay me back. Just buy me a drone. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I I said, Victor, I didn't tell him that. I would say, I will pay your money back. Uh, I will give you not one drone, but several drones uh, for his for his his example. Uh, why are they in there in the trenches? Uh, because they might not have a lot of money. They might not have any land or a future, you know, for a career. I mean, it's hard to make money in Ukraine, uh, and the things that you can do are probably better doing something else. Uh, but they're there uh, because they believe in love, and what is love? Love is God, right? Uh, so it's, we're not talking about the bearded, uh, uh, bearded fellow in the clouds. That's uh, that's uh, that's farce. It's not God. So God is love. Uh, Shevchenko and a reconstruction. Had Shevchenko played the Torban, they actually said he played one of these. Uh, how would that sound? So the Kozars would take these dead poets and resurrect them, continue the spirit, and through spirit defend Ukraine. Right? It's something very strange. Money in weapons, you know, that's it's very primitive, let's be honest. It's the spirit which uh, can save your soul, uh, can save your country, can save the world.
Jakob Kozatsky Diti, thanks to Kozak children uh, saving the world today. Well, they didn't say it just like that. 
Uh, when I told them what I had to say, Club Stars were journalists, right? Uh, and I was going to use the media uh, to uh, address America and tell them we're going to have a big war, don't worry, we'll come out of this victorious, and the leader of most nations, and we will help America get its act together. And not this division. They said goodbye. <laughs> Uh, as long as they're, you know, being, you know, doing good journalist work and not, you know, uh, doing whatever pays the money to do. So, uh, this is uh, any John Dowland fans, early music, Renaissance. You know, what am I doing playing John Dowland? Uh, because this is uh, some particular philosophy dealing with death. Uh, in Renaissance England, it was very popular, a melancholy, right? Minor tonalities, maybe it was. Kind of agree. Maybe he was Irish. <laughs> he was actually born in Dublin. I don't know. It could have been. Uh, I even proposed to go to Sorley's and play. <laughs> you know, it didn't happen. I was across the street in St. George's. It was probably a proper place. But uh, we were invited to play in Bucha, uh, where the mass grave is. The Russians didn't make the mass grave. Uh, they just left the black bodies lying uh, on the ground. Uh, I even saw one, they forgot. They didn't manage to get it. It was a terrible, terrible scene. Uh, but coming to the grave itself, uh, it was, you know, of course, I've seen the pictures before, you can't help but not cry. But uh, again, this incredible positive history. And I told my students, I'm not just alone, uh, obviously, you can imagine. During the war, I was in Ukraine. Uh, I've been here for several months, getting through cultural diplomacy, hoping America will help now. This is a very strategic uh, union of Ukraine and America. But the rest of the month, I'm back home with my family. They were evacuated for the first five months, but they're even back there now. Uh, I didn't like leaving my family, uh, but I told my wife, if you want to come, I can find a sponsor. Uh, she said, no, it's time to plant the fields. So we have something to eat. And she has a Chrysler, so she can, she can leave if she has to. Uh, and it puts it, you know, he's not going to get an inch. But uh, I told my friends, my students, uh, you know, close our funeral. Right, to bring peace, uh, to clean this, this terribly destroyed land in Bucha and your team. And this is what I play. Uh, not just a lullaby, a funeral lullaby. I didn't even realize at the time, but now seeing it, I realize he's singing to, to a girl who's not just sleeping and having a rest from the world's toils and, and problems. Uh, she actually died because she can't see the sun. He can't see her eyes because she's underground. And the idea is not to... Uh, Know, it's a huge loss. Let's never let it happen again. Let's stop it happening now. It's still happening, right? Uh, they're still bombing children and whatever's happening to children. They're not just at summer camps. Some are being adopted and by the wrong people, right? So uh, the idea is the people who have died, uh, let their souls go to heaven, uh, be at peace, rest in peace, uh, eternal memory, Vishnapamya, don't let it happen again. Uh, but uh, such a fantastic love life to, uh, uh, again, to not panic, uh, to uh, get prepared to do what we have to do so this will never happen again. <laughs> Oh, 
uh, how when they pushed the button, uh, the fireworks did not go off. <laughs> Those things can happen. God can do that, right? Uh, uh, so uh, pray and work uh, and uh, the cons about the truth and the lie. The problem with Putin is he has too much money. You think Bill Gates is rich? Uh, he may be the most wealthiest person on earth, just in terms of, uh, of uh, Mulak, or what is his name, Kabusa, uh, but also power. Any Tolkienist fans? Any Tolkienist? Or am I the only one? <laughs> the Ring of Power, right? The bomb. Uh, that's what Tolkien was talking about. It's very Christian philosophy. Uh, I'm a fan. Uh, I've even had ideas of Kobzarik on Red Square. Maybe it'll happen. Uh, I hope I don't have to, to do that. Uh, but, who knows? I think this is pretty crazy stuff, or you might think it's crazy. Maybe it is crazy. So this is a song about the truth and the lie. Because Putin is not God. Uh, God is the truth, as this hymn states. He's love, he's truth, he's morality. He's the good things in life. Uh, Putin is the bad things in life. Uh, so even though they paint icons dedicated to him, remember, uh, uh, he is not all powerful. Uh, God just wants us to get together and do good things, and then God will help us do these things we can't do, such as uh, get rid of his bombs, or, or so they don't go off. Like some people say these are old bombs. <laughs> uh, so let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. Uh, there is no truth in the world, is the first line. That which is called the truth is really a lie. So, interesting stuff. Why they killed the Cubs are singing 1933 Stalin will not like this song. Uh, in a newspaper called The Truth Pravda, anybody hear Pravda? Uh, we say lies. <laughs>
chance to hold them. Uh, and I have a very soft case. And unfortunately, during my flight, uh, they put the instruments under the plane. And I said, okay, gate check, that's okay, but you know, give, it, give it to me back afterwards. Uh, they sent them all the way to Raleigh, so three planes. I have never prayed so much. <laughs> I even uh, managed to get the, the pilot to, to hopefully to make an exception for these national treasures. Right? Uh, these are just, you know, some old, you know, Pomsa Prabhupada Mandura. Uh, these are some of the nicest. It's not, I'm not boasting. Uh, but the idea of having them destroyed before, you know, my spring offensive, right? Uh, this would be terrible. They were fine. So I would like to have a chance. Uh, we have this, uh, what do you call it, audience participation, right? You don't have to sing, it's a prayer, uh, but you don't even have to believe in God to sing, it's a song, right? Uh, or in, in, in the mother of God, uh, Maria. Uh, so this is a, a specific song to uh, Mary, the mother of God, uh, and a very interesting tradition the Ukrainians had, uh, the, the Cossacks, uh, to pray for Mary. Mary was very specific because she appeared many times to them, right? Uh, uh, many instances uh, where, you know, because uh, pray, she appeared, uh, she even, uh, in instance, a, a monastery in Korshayev, where there were not even Kozaks, there were monks, right, and, and a, a word came, uh, and uh, they wanted to take over the monastery, they wanted the priest pray to Mary, she appeared on the cross, uh, not far from Kamenets Podilsky, where Victor is from. Uh, uh, and uh, and the arrows turned back and shot those who were shooting. Uh, so these things happen, right? And the question is, when Jesus says, you know, you live by the sword, you die by the sword, it sounds like he doesn't want us to take weapons, right? Uh, and who wants to take weapons? The good folks don't want them, right? But of course, the thieves very much do. Uh, and for defense, uh, in today's day, uh, it's a necessary situation. But as Ahusa said, uh, actually, uh, one of the Ukrainian spiritual leaders, guns are not bad, and they're not good. The same thing with money. It's the person who wields them, his motivation, why is he using them? That's important to understand. Uh, so, uh, the Cossacks uh, would sing this particular promise. Uh, it's a Baroque, the Cossack Baroque, you've heard that. And the language is very old. Uh, it's actually uh, by, composed by a spiritual leader, Dmitry Trutolo, uh, Saint Rostovsky, who's a canonized saint in the Orthodox Church. Uh, and uh, I sing the verses, you sing the, uh, the response or the, the chorus. It's very simple, but very beautiful. And we pray. Uh, this is some of the songs we sing in the bomb shelters. And when the bombs are coming down, you can imagine, you know, what a, what a, a chronic event in the second month of war, when they're filled with dogs, cats, uh, everybody. They have tents in, 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 the, in the metro station. They've been living there for I don't know how many months. Uh, but to sing these, these songs, it's very strange. Uh, but it works. <laughs> uh, the spiritual, uh, and it, also you have the spiritual conviction that you are protected. That uh, uh, Mary closes our skies. It, it maybe NATO doesn't. Uh, your fear diminishes, uh, and you might say, you know, why don't I have this fear when I go to the front? I think that's why. I don't think they can kill me. It's a strange feeling, but uh, you know, for these feelings, that's how I live my life. Uh, and uh, so, uh, I will sing. Rose Shichnaya, Diva Chistaya, Nyashne Pakuchamaya. In your part. Odai Nam Ruku. Give us a hand. Medai Nam Ruku. Don't let us suffer. Matko Milosena. Mother of Mercy. It's so a very simple, you know, some Ukrainian, uh, but a very nice concept uh, and, and spiritual protection for, uh, for us here in Ukraine. So let's try it. Let's try the chorus together. And I'm basically 
comparing uh, Maria to a flower, different types of flowers like uh, uh, the lilies, uh, the rose, and others. Uh, in the second four verses, uh, we're asking her to look down us from heaven and protect us and to uh, free us from slavery, uh, for her to stand with us, uh, we are her, uh, her faithful servants, uh, and to give us the promise uh, to, uh, to uh, take us into her protection uh, as the mother of mercy. <laughs>
Uh, but the last player of the Kobza lived in 1880, he probably died about 1890. We'll stop that aside. Uh, he was the most uh, world renowned uh, known of the uh, And this instrument is a copy of his instrument, uh, pretty much just some double strings, uh, but made from a photograph. Why a photograph? Because in museums we don't have Kobzas. They were all destroyed uh, or, or broke. I mean, they're very delicate instruments. Uh, uh, so this is a. Uh, I've played several genres, the cons, uh, and, and some in general uh, folklore. Uh, but this is uh, an example of the dances, uh, right? Just to hear. Uh, there are any bluegrass fans here? Oh, uh, like fantastic. Bluegrass fans. I used to play in a band called Chicken Pot Pie. <laughs> right spread. Uh, I loved it. It was great. I played the mandolin. Uh, Jethro uh, called me, at least he was, I don't know. Uh, he called me Slid the Gila Cutty. <laughs> Slid the Gila Cutty, bless him. So this is the kind of random version of bluegrass. Uh, but we'll stop on a side, note for note. Those of you who think you know you're playing folk music, it sounds very Turkish, it sounds very Asian, uh, because uh, that's what it was. Uh, very close to the Ottoman Empire, a uh, fretless lute, uh, you might call it an oud. And it's true, this is the Ukrainian uh, oud with some treble strings. Uh, so, step that aside, how would that, that sound? Something like this. I hope God lets me, you know, have a club to dinner. 
that out really good. Person <laughs> like, I think I didn't get that. So the angels play the harps twice and it comes out to die. But uh, Easter, uh, Pascha, we call it pain. Does anybody know the, 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 the meaning of the term Pascha? Raise your hand. Passover. Oh, good. Uh, and Passover, uh, we know it relates to uh, that the, the, the Spirit would pass over the Jewish families and not kill uh, the firstborn of the living people. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so maybe resurrection, you say, in the Christian world. Uh, but really, uh, in Ukrainian, Pascha actually means uh, the act of becoming free. Right? And the Jews who were enslaved uh, in, in their very modern Egypt at the time, uh, uh, the idea was to uh, become free and do what? Go to that desert in Israel, <laughs> or not Israel, but you know, uh, that part of the world. And of course, they said, You gotta be crazy and go back there. You know, we'd rather be slaves here than, than go back there and you know, fight for our freedom or, or, or create a new government. Uh, so, this is uh, the Ukrainian variant. Which we call Duma uh, Promarusa Boslavka. Right? She's not Moses. Uh, she's the priest's daughter. She was captured in a raid uh, and sold into slavery and became a concubine. Right? Serving the Sultan on the Persian rugs on the upper floors of this, you know, uh, the, 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 the Sultan's palace. Uh, but the Duma is the dialogue between Marusia, Mary, and her Cossack brethren who are in the dungeon. Right? There's 750, 150 of them. They're in shackles. Uh, they are rotting. They don't even know they've been there for 30 years. Right? 33 Ukraine is a very important number because for 30 years we thought we had freedom. And we found Putin has been uh, putting sharp things in our wheels. <laughs> He's been manipulating behind the scenes, you know, bribing our government officials to uh, do what he wants, even paying uh, post $18 billion to the country. Right? The, the CIA actually intercepted some communications. So, uh, what does Marusa say to the Cossacks? She says, Do you know what day tomorrow is? And they say, How do we know? We don't have a calendar, we don't, have a, uh, we don't see the sun, we have a, a window in our dungeon. Uh, she says, I know you don't know. Uh, but just so you know, today is Easter Saturday, tomorrow is Easter Sunday. The Cossacks do not want to hear this. They're rotting, right? They are not thinking about the afterlife, they're thinking about Ukraine. <laughs> And what's going to happen to Ukraine when they're in the dungeon, uh, dying? So they start cursing her, saying, Oh, you came here to torment us. You know, you can celebrate Easter, you know, on your Persian rugs, however you like, with your very expensive drinks and whatever. Uh, and she says, No, I didn't come here to torment you. I came here to save you. When the Sultan goes on Saturday to the mosque, she'll steal the key, risk her life, and let the Cossacks go home. Right? It's a very heroic thing to do. Uh, but as the Cossacks are leaving, they say, Marusa, are you coming with us uh, to our promised Ukrainian land where we can finally have a free country, right? Democratically elected leaders like the Hetmans in the Cossack period. Uh, period. Uh, and what does Marusa say? She says, are you kidding me? Go back to that country. <laughs> it's nice here in Turkey and the Empire. We have lots of money. We have lots of privileges, lots of these things. Uh, fighting for freedom. That's what you do, Kozak. So, you know, go with God and this. But there's another version that maybe uh, she is not Marusia, but that she is Roxalana, the most powerful Ukrainian uh, woman of, of world history. And maybe she could have helped Ukraine for that, in that position. Uh, there's different versions. Uh, uh, but as Moses said, let my people go, and as I add, let's go home. <laughs> right? America is a fantastic place. And it's nice for all these smart, educated people, freedom lovers, to be here. But there's another project. It's called Leaving America and taking that pioneer spirit that America has given. I was a Neil right? I was very serious about that. And going back uh, and helping your country where you're from. My grandfather would have hated to, to, he didn't think the Soviet experiment would last 70 years. He would have loved to go back home. He didn't make it, right? uh, but I did. <laughs> So, if anybody else has some roots, maybe some Celtic roots, uh, maybe some uh, other roots, uh, remember, uh, the world needs uh, the American spirit. And I'm not talking about Hollywood and, and commerciality and that stuff. I'm talking about the fundamentals which the country was built on. 
And me coming to America, you might say, you know, who is this young and talking about freedom? Though? That generation doesn't value that. I've been in Ukraine for 25 years, right? Uh, and I live there because I have a free life in the village uh, with my five children, with my fantastic woman, or my wife. Uh, uh, it was a long drive. Uh, my woman, yes, my wife. Uh, and as Jeanette asked, this an idea of, what did your wife say when you, evac when you evacuated your, your children to Raleigh, North Carolina for five months and you went back? You know, to fight cooking with these things. Uh, I said, she said one time, I believe in your mission. And that's it. I didn't hear a word more. And even now, uh, she's there and, and she knows that I'm doing good work. She believes in it. Uh, and all my friends who've seen me, what I'm doing now, uh, sometimes they say, oh, you know, you know, this isn't serious, playing music around. Uh, but really, I believe in my work and I know the efficiency of my work. I know the effectiveness of my work. Uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is serious stuff. So, uh, Marusa doesn't go back, but she says, tell my family not to raise a ransom. Uh, I'm, you know, I'll stay back, uh, but you go home and create a fantastic government. Uh, and uh, every Duma ends with a prayer. The Dumas are spiritual, uh, like parables. Jesus saw a parable, but this is a Kozak scene. Uh, and each uh, Duma ends with a prayer uh, for you, uh, in your attention. You've given me the most important thing. Right? You've allowed me to revive this tradition, even in America. This is on a different level. I'm not even Ukrainian born. Right? And isn't it strange? My, uh, my, my friends or my colleagues who practice tradition say, Yuri, it's not good. You have an accent. I mean, you're not really so Ukrainian. But I've come to realize God has prepared me for this work. Right? Uh, I've been doing this for six years. Uh, but once the bombs happened, I was, you know, I even. Several days before, I created a tour of Ukraine, all of Ukraine. The organizer said, listen, we got to flee. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So we went to Kiev for two months. Then we went to the front in all of Ukraine. It was my second time in America, uh, raising awareness. Uh, and uh, I did my work. Uh, and Duma uh, Pramursa Vosalka. And also, yes, a prayer for, for, your, for your attention, for your love, but also for Ukraine uh, and for the free world. And as I say, uh, please help us, God, uh, to save us from Moscow slavery. <coughs>
there's some defense which even they don't understand. Uh, and there was no, it was actually, if the bomb rate started going off, there was a plan to actually, you know, disperse in the fields. Uh, but <laughs> they said it was okay. You just don't want to make too much fuss on the internet. So <laughs> if people had some questions, where do our donations go? And I'll tell you very honestly, uh, they go to Ukrainian defense. Either through the Cossacks, uh, that means through Zbrojny uh, Sil Ukraine, that means the army, the Vikings, which my friends say they need. Uh, that's either drones at this point or uh, going to the hospital outside of Zaporizhia. I won't tell you where because it's a secret, so Putin doesn't find out and bomb them. Uh, and uh, the other costs go to our clubs, our mission. Uh, that's uh, basically gas for being able to do what we do. Uh, we've had, again, Twitter concerts uh, during this year. That's a lot of concerts. Uh, and we've done almost, and almost nothing. $3,000, people just started sending me money. I said, God, what do I need this money for? And the answer was uh, to Kobzar, Ukraine, uh, and, uh, but also for education. Uh, nobody pays me grants. I don't look for money. I only accept alms. Uh, but also, uh, it's important to say that I will take a little bit of that money to feed my family. I'll be honest. <laughs> That's how we live. Uh, through my Kozari work, but we really don't need so much food because <laughs> we have vegetables. Uh, but as my wife said today, Mirosal bumped into some concrete and she needs to do an x-ray. Uh, and uh, I've discussed with Jeanette what we need to do now. Uh, so uh, if you don't have money, don't give me a penny, but do take a disc, right? Uh, and if you have a lot of money in that bank account, uh, won't you lay your money down? <laughs> but yes, I didn't come for money. That's, that's, uh, it's nice to have to go home to something to my friends uh, and for our, our work. But the most important thing is do uh, your thoughts, your prayers, uh, volunteerism for Ukraine. That's what we need. Uh, the money god is the false god. Uh, and uh, you can do a lot of things without money. That's how I live. That's how I so God bless you all. If anybody has any questions or wants to take a photo or anything, uh, come up and take a look.